Hello, everyone. This is Leslie Acosta, the host of the show, Voices of Change. Today, we're going to have a special edition to Voices of Change. Sometimes we, we, we do this uh, kind of to mix up a little bit, uh, get away from the political uh, uh, discussions and conversations that we normally have on Voices of Change. Today, we're going to uh, 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 turn the tie here a little bit and talk about entertain about the entertainment world. Uh, we're going to be interviewing Cherie Laurent, uh, who is from Australia. Uh, she's from uh, Melbourne, Australia. Uh, she's an actress. She's a singer. She's a director. She's a fashion star. Uh, she's a little bit of everything. She's into, into TV and filming. Um, and we're also going to interview Don. Uh, Don is a fixture here at Usala. Uh, not only does he do our voiceovers here at Usala, but but he's he's also uh, he's been into the in, in the broadcasting uh, arena for a very very long time. And so today I want to welcome both Don and Cherie. We're going to be discussing uh, the, their new uh, gig that they have. It's a show that they're they're putting together. It's called the Cherie and Don Show that will be aired and played here at Usala. So once again, uh, welcome. This is a special edition to Voices of Change. I am the host along with Aisha Richardson. And so welcome, Don, and welcome, Cherie. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank Hi. you. Thank Hello, you, Leslie, Don. for inviting us. Yes, and thank you for, uh, for chiming in, and thank you for taking and carving out time to do uh, this interview. Don, we've been talking about this for, for quite some time, trying to piece this together and um, trying to uh, put the show together so that the Usala audience here, not only in Philadelphia, but across the world, can get a chance to uh, preview uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the diversity of what we have here at Usala. Because Usala is a Latino media center, but we have, we're in, uh, diverse. Uh, we're in 82 countries around the world. And uh, we have a lot of programming here that's very diverse. And I think this show will be value added to what we currently do here at Usala. Um, Don, tell me a little bit about yourself, how you were introduced to Cherie, and what's the path going forward between you and Cherie, which I'll be introducing in just a minute. Okay, well, once again, uh, my name is Don Hooksima. I'm a voiceover. Um, artist here living now in Orlando, Florida. I've been in uh, radio for many years. I started off in Canada. And that's my uh, birthplace. And I was um, on a particular radio station up there from FM 108 that was right at the end of your dial. After you passed all the rest, you only get two of the best, and that's radio station FM 108. And that was uh, many years ago. Then I came over to the U.S. I have a particular skill set that brought me over here. And eventually I landed here in Orlando, Florida, and I worked for the House of Mouse for a while. And, and um, I started uh, voiceover, my voiceover career here in, in Orlando, Florida, where I met a very um, versatile voiceover by the name of James Arnold Taylor. And he pointed me towards the right way to get trained as a voiceover artist and get away from the, uh, more from the radio and into voiceover, which has been quite a ride. Yeah. And um, and for the past seven months, at the beginning of this year, by happenstance, I saw Cherie's photo through uh, through social media. I paid the photo a nice compliment, which she replied um, with a with a compliment to me, just saying thank you. And I when I looked over her profile, I saw that she was um, a TV producer director. And at times, when I see that through social media, I'll reach out to producers and directors as they see if uh, if they could uh, use any of my voiceover talents for their particular um, industry or show, which Cherie did reach back out and said that she did have a particular project with me in mind. And that's how, and that's how it all started. And then we started doing a lot of collaboration together. Um, and then once I found out a lot of um, Cherie's background and what she was doing today, um, as far as producing a TV show there in Melbourne, Australia, with um, zero budget, zero money. Um, she also is a singer songwriter. And I thought, wow, she really needs assistance in regards to help managing her career and get, and because I saw a lot of talent going to, uh, going to waste. 
Not that it was being wasteful because she was producing very good results, but I thought it could be done over a larger scale. So mm -hmm. we started to collaborate together and work together, and she used me for many of her episodes on season 11, which was just uh, completed. And then um, Cherie had the idea of um, having a, uh, or a show or a podcast together, and then we were collaborating on that. And um, this morning, earlier this morning, we just put together our fifth episode of Don and Cherie. And uh, where Cherie does um, marvelous artwork and images and so on. Um, her show is all about um, art, photography, um, things about life. Um, I'll let Cherie take it from there. I don't want to steal much of her thunder there because uh, she is, she has all of the talent and brains behind the operation. And, uh, but our show is, will be things that, uh, that will be things about what's happening in the world, things about uh, uh, perhaps some controversial subjects that we bring up, but they're important subjects all about life. And uh, we wanted to reach out to those ones who, and um, perhaps make them think, uh, perhaps even make a change in regards to what's happening with, uh, within the lifestyle that we have to deal with today. I mean, it's an ever-changing world that we see today. And, um, and, and so we wanted to bring that across. Now, when we looked at Usula's um, philosophy and their mission, I thought our show would be a very good fit for Usula. And yeah. um, that's when I reached out to you, Leslie, and um, and uh, proposed that. And so we were glad that um, you looked at that uh, uh, favorably to uh, to launch our show on your network. And uh, I think it has a great market here in the U.S. Now, with Sheree and I collaborating, um, it it'd be conducive for us to uh, to work closer together. Ba basically, bring Sheree from Australia here to the U.S. And uh, where where we can uh, really make a success of this uh, particular particular show, and uh, who knows where we can take it from here. Yes, and I think Leslie just froze up a bit. I cannot hear Leslie. No, I, I think the picture froze. So it. Uh, the fashion star. Oh, she's lived in places like New York, New Zealand, um, and now she's based in Australia. Uh, she's been involved with producing new episodes of the TV show Ma Cherie, and she released her full, first uh, full music album with uh, smashing songs like Oi 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 Randy, uh, Sailor Boy, the Australian screen legend will represent Australia, and BG Sam, new international song title, I Will Be Loving You Till the End. So Cherie, welcome to Usala Media. Uh, it's a pleasure for us to have you, uh, to interview you, to have you here with us and interview you directly from New Zealand. So it's a pleasure, uh, uh, Australia. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. How are you? Thank you very much. I'm very well, thank you. I just have to clarify it's two o'clock a.m. here and we are in lockdown, but I feel very, very happy and privileged that I am talking to you and I'm actually having the chance to get um, exposure to all the lovely, um, uh, what I call them, we call them audience, I call them client in United States or all around the world. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. You've been uh, obviously in the filming, director, acting, singing business for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, Talk to us a little bit about how your career has evolved to where it, it is now and, and where, where you see uh, yourself in the future with all of this uh, well-rounded experience that, that you have in filming and directing and singing and fashion, because you do a little bit of everything. And some of it is a little bit controversial, even your music. So talk to us a little bit about that. Um, it's, a, it's been... A great ride, very big. Um, I start long time ago uh, as a model, which I got uh, spotted in a shopping center with my mom. And I did a small TV commercial, but I always loved films and TVs. And I born in Iraq, so the war did not give me any chance to follow 
my dreams. I was doing a lot of singing training, if I can. And um, after surviving four wars, I have to run away from Iraq and find a new country. So I traveled to Jordan. I worked as an art director. And then I got spotted for a commercial again on the street. Someone come and said, would you like to be in a commercial TV? I said, okay. So I went there and I saw them, how they make the commercial. And I was falling in love with it. In the meantime, I was finishing my bachelor in graph, uh, computer science, and I studied two years as a graphic designer. And from there, I became an art director in Dubai. I got a job. In the art director in Dubai, I was involved with creating commercial and TV, but I was the person who do the concept for the ad and shooting it and editing it and um, casting the models. This worked really well, and then I got offered a job in New Zealand. So I thought, okay, I'm moving. So I moved to New Zealand, and there I got uh, a talent agency also, also spotted me on a shopping center, and they said, have you done modeling before? And I said, yes. And they said, why don't you come to meet me in the office? So I went there, and I started working as a model. And then from there, I started doing extra work, and I got spotted. And then from there, they said to me, you should do acting classes. You're really good because I was up doing small parts. So I started taking acting classes. And then yeah. I ended up on a film, two TV, two TV commercial, and one episode on a TV series. And they said, Fox Studio starting in Sydney, Australia. You could make it bigger in Australia. So I moved to Australia. And there I start creating my own musical theater. So I start writing in music and doing modeling and being in contact. There's a documentary being um, made about how I start my life because it was really crazy. Um, I arrived to in New Zealand, in Australia, no one knew who I am. And it was very hard to find an agent. I could mm -hmm. find a modeling agent, but not acting agent. So I decided to make my first film and show all my skills as actress. So I made a film called The Message, and then I made the second film called uh, Innocently Guilty, and then the third film. And this is all filmed from zero budget. I just write the script and shoot them, find the actors, edit them. And um, I managed to enter them to film festival, and the three films went to the final. There I got interviewed on TV, and the lady that she interviewed me on TV she has a big position in a TV station called TBS in Sydney. So one day at three o'clock in the afternoon, she called me and she said, I've been in all your musical. I loved your film. I screened your film on my show. Can you create a TV show for us? And I said, okay, because I have a lot of respect for her. And I just committed myself to TV show. This was 2006. And the journey started with my Mashery TV show. Suddenly I made five seasons. In the same time, the movies that I made was keep going to 15 film festivals and getting a word the whole time. After that, I decided to make the move to New York. And in New York, I wanted to take Mashery to international scale. So I um, spent six months in New York. This is before the, the power of internet and all this. And I was mailing, calling, um, copying DVDs and sending them to all distribution company. In the, mean, in the same time, I launched the show on Manhattan Neighborhood Network, and that got me a lot of exposure, and I got contacted by a modeling agency. I started doing modeling again, and then I met someone called Dean Holtman, which a musician from New York that worked with Mick Rock, which worked with David Bowie and Freddie Mercury and Deborah Harry, Deborah Harry Blondie. And uh, we met in New York Film Festival. And he said, we sat next to each other. And I didn't know who those people. We just sat next to them. And then he said, he, he got his uh, Walkman and he said to me, that's my music. And I said, funny, because I'm saying, that's my music. And he said, oh, you've got a really good voice. Come to my studio. And I didn't know who's this guy. <laughs> I went to his studio as in Staten Island and we recorded seven songs. So I get called also for um, distribution with film around the world. They signed me up that the TV show, 
naturally going to go all around the world and it's going to be worth millions of dollars. And then the market crash market came. And when the market crashed, um, you know, you understand everything closed down and no one wanted to buy shows and no one wanted to do things. And so I got broken hearted and I just left and come back to Australia and I kept writing songs and I studied fashion because I'm always, um, I worked in fashion for a long time from models to design to um, basically what I call it buyers um, and stylists. And also I worked for Estee Lauder as a makeup artist. Mm. So all this put together and I thought, let's start a modeling agency. <laughs> so I started the modeling agency and then it becomes a talent agency, which creates good contact with filmmakers, which I did all the casting for Superman Return, the movie, which got shot in Sydney. I was the casting director for it. And from there, um, I got called again by the same TV station and they said, would you like to go back on TV? And at that time I had a relationship and I said, I have a stepson, I have a partner, my life is busy, I'm studying fashion degree, maybe when I finish. So they kept calling me and then I thought one day, you know what, I love making film and I love teaching film, so I'm going to go back to show. So I come back and I start Mashery again and it went like fire. Um, people really loved this. So it covered all Australia and then suddenly with the lockdown, I start getting offered from people from America. They want me to be a TV presenter on their show. And I always say, sorry, I actually live in Australia because they've seen my show on Facebook or Vimeo. So in the end, I one lady, she said, I have a show on Roku. And I said, what is Roku? Because in Australia, we don't have Roku. So she explained it to me and then I start studying more information and I spent three months learning about Roku and then I launched my TV show on Roku and then on Fire TV, which took it all around the world. In the meantime, I was traveling around the world and made a series seven, which is about travel. And I think people love about my show that, as I always say, um, I'm not funny. I'm very real. I talk. Um, yeah. I talk to you as I talk to my friend, as I talk to my mom, as I talk to my brother. There's only one Sheree. I don't put an act. Um, I share my life story. I, I share my vulnerability. I share my feeling. I share what I think and uh, what I believe. And it all comes to, um, as my dad used to, used to say to me, you're too kind and you get all your kindness and passion from your mom. And I think that's what we need in this world, uh, more than money, more than power. And that was my message in my show. I always say, treat people the way you like to be treated. Take care of yourself and the people around, the people you love and the people around you. Show more respect, more um, understanding, more kindness. It will make the work or the world better place for you and me. And from this concept, I start targeting the platform has becomes really big. And you understand in Australia, it's a small people, so it's not like America, but I become very popular. And then I start pushing further for real issues that meant a lot to me, which is definitely women freedom, women respect. Um, I came from Middle East. So I know how my sister's been treated, my girlfriend's been treated, my mom got treated. So I always fight for their right, for their freedom, for women to believe in themselves and to be strong and to stop um, thinking they need someone to make them perfect. They're mm -hmm. perfect as they are. And then I start sharing with life because as an artist, I'm transparent to whatever going, if it is Corona, if it is self-help, if it is um, against violent against women, if it is mm -hmm. against poverty, if it is against uh, aggression, if it's against uh, supporting global warming, it's about uh, understand fast fashion and the effect of fast fashion about the, the globe and it's about uh, sustainability, about globalization. So. I studied art and I studied music and I studied religion and I studied history. Apart from, well, long term of life experiences. So 
what's better to use all this to reach to people and share it with them and try to improve their life and help them. Um, and that's the joy I get from making the show. I have not made any money from the show until now, but I feel very high every time I receive an email from someone telling me, thank you, you changed my life. Thank you, you changed my life. I realized what I was doing wrong. I changed it. And it's incredible with the globalization. I get email from women in Jordan and I get email from people in Brazil and I get email from America and New Zealand. So suddenly the whole world has become such a small platform and um, you could actually make difference in people's lives. Yeah. So as for the music, that's a different thing because I have two type, different types of music. I trained as a classic opera and I love opera. I sang opera for a long time and then I have a problem with my voice and I have to go to South Korea and I have a surgery and I lost my voice for two years. And then I come back with this husky voice and I could not do opera anymore. So I started doing pop and then I start doing rock. And I do two types of music. I do real powerful music about powerful issues like uh, equality, like giving hope, like dreams, like love. And then I do the fun side, which is inspired by Prince and David Bowie and Freddie Mercury, which is a um, song like I Think of You, I Touch Myself, and Good Guilt and Bad. But all these coming to reason about stages, like when People tell me, how can you make movies that are really quite raunchy sometimes, but you make movies about really religion and stuff? And I said, look at Madonna. Madonna, she made a, a book called Sex. And then yeah. she made about children. You yeah. don't give the books of sex to the children and you don't book, give the children <laughs> books to the adults. Each market is different. Right. And in our life as a human being, you wear a lots of hat in every day. You talk to me different than you talk to your partner, you talk to your daughter, you talk to your girlfriend, you talk to the men on the street. Each one of us has so many different personality and so many different corner of life. And I would like to reach as much as I can because um, I have a lots of beautiful girls on my show. And I discuss a lots of women issues on my show. And a lot of the women issues problem because of, well, because of the men. So I get 79% of men viewers watching my show because me and because the girls I put. So if I could bring those men and make them listen to me talking about violence against women and make them change and think I'm achieving something, I'm reaching mm -hmm. to a target. So there's lots of things you could do um, to reach to where you went and your goals. Um, you just have to be smart about it. So that's why, you know, it's like when Don said to me that uh, the comment was made on Mashuri was um, quite, they used the word, which is mean uh, sexual or something. And I said, yeah, but there's 144 episodes. There is 11 se season. <laughs> uh, season on Netflix, only five episodes. They could pick the nice one and yeah. play it, leave the sexy <laughs> one for the one that they like them. So they don't have to put the the raunchy one, they could use, there's full season about sustainability and fast fashion and globalization and economy. There's a season about travel. There's a season about, you know, women's problems. So there's something for everyone. That's the whole yeah. idea. Let and the whole concept is art, beauty, music, and visual. Capture the brain. Right. That's what's good. <laughs> Cherie, uh, in, in its majority, your viewership are male versus female? I get 79% uh, of male in Australia. We have a different culture here. Um, I do love glamour and I yeah. do, glamour is my thing. And um, I love women being women. And I think God, create as beautiful as it is. And uh, so I I play at that quite, I mean, you've seen some of the show. And women in Australia don't like that. Young women, all the women over the age of 40, they love it because they pass, pass the glamour 
and they see the substance. Right. Of, but the younger one, when they see me dressing Chanel and all this kind of things, they <laughs> just, uh, that's not for them. They just, you don't, you're not one of us. We don't like you. It's, uh, it's sad, and I tried to brag to them, but then I was very popular with the French market, with the Chinese market, with all the other nationality who love fashion and beauty, which is the American market. And so Australian is a little bit different. Um, if I want to be appealing to the Australian female, I have to um, look like them and dress like them, right. which is not really very fashionable. Yeah, your your topics of discussion or or even in your shows are very controversial because you touch upon different topics, uh, women issues, men issues, sexuality. You're very exotic in your in in, in uh, not only in your appearance but even in your show and the topics that you discuss. Uh, yeah. You, why? I mean, I guess. Those topics that you do discuss, I'm, I'm pretty sure you've done a scoping of, uh, of in, in the market of what interest people, what kind of topics people are interested in. Have you gotten good feedback um, with those controversial topics that you uh, put out on your uh, in your shows? I mean, what what has been the feedback when you do the shows with such controversial issues that a lot of people in certain societies, they view as taboo. Um, people love it. <laughs> yeah. <Really. laughs> I mean, you probably the same generation as I am, and you remember Sex in the City when it came up. I'm the generation of Sex in the City, and you remember Samantha, and you remember all the things that they talked about in Sex in the City. And I was watching this when I was younger. <laughs> and for the first that time was I a hit show, by the way, Cherie. Sex in the City was a hit show. Exactly. And I was thinking, those girls presenting each one of us in a certain stage. I'm Carrie, I'm Samantha, I'm, um, you know, <laughs> the, whatever, the, the conservative one. Like, in some stage, I believe in love and romance and marriage. And other things, yes, I dress sexy and I like Samantha and I like her you know, how she goes over after what she, I wish I would be her. I'm not her, but every woman wished to be Samantha, but we're not. And with Carrie, with all her mess up and, you know, crazy outfit and crazy test and the crazy boyfriends, this show was <laughs> big. And until now, I have it on DVDs. And every time I need to have a break or I need to chill, I watch it and I found something in it every time. And it is very controversial show they talked about everything uh, about stuff. marriage about infidelity about homosexuality about e every single subject out out there yeah everything and it's uh it's crazy because when i made um when i was making my shows um i was very attractive when i was younger <laughs> so <laughs> when I made the show at the beginning all my girlfriend, wherever I go, I used to go out. I mean, I don't normally go out because I get hassles a lot. And um, they used to refer to me as sexy, sexy, sexy. Obviously, I don't see myself sexy because if I see myself sexy, that means there's something wrong with me. <laughs> I can't look at myself in the mirror and say, wow, that's sexy. Uh, for me, it's sexy is a good looking man. That's sexy. So I don't find myself sexy. But all my girlfriend would say, why don't she make sure about sex? Because... You know, everyone looking at you all the time. And then my girlfriend started sending me books of Nancy Friday. And I start reading the books of Nancy Friday, watching Sex and the City. And I'm a big fan of Madonna. I mean, Madonna is my idol. The Madonna pushed women freedom and, you know, empowerment to really new stages in our, in our life. And I thought, that's really interesting. So I start reading more and then I made advertise on my TV show and I said, if you have a sexual fantasy that you don't want to talk about it even to your best friend, send it to me in a letter and if I like it, I will make a show. And the amount of letters I was getting is crazy. And the amount of popularity of the show, people start loving it because I start making shows about guys like women's shoes and girls thinking of lesbian encounters and it's really crazy. 
And this season has left my writing from here to here. And it was about the clever of how to make their letters from XXX rated, because I think, you know, when men write, they normally go overboard. Or when they send letters to me, and then I have to change it to make it more into a woman point of view. So make it more romantic and make it more, rather than he's saying, I'm doing this, 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 I change it all to to end to a touch on the cheek or fondle on the on the hand or just some something tasteful and gentle, which is woman loved it a lot. And I remember the older woman that she the lady I told you she called me and gave me the job. I was embarrassed to meet her in this season called Forbidden Love. And she came to me and she said, I love your series. It's so tasteful, it's so elegant, it's so it is has a lot of sensuality, but it's not vulgar and it's not um, disgusting. It's really well done. Well done. Yeah. And I'm thinking, wow, that is so beautiful. Yeah. To be able, like some episodes, people send me letters and I have to ask, which I really like. I like to talk about sexuality and sex different between cultures because I told even my manager, I said to him, you know, I came from culture until i was 16 my mom told me man baby's born because a man have something comes from his finger when he put his finger on the woman's belly button she gets pregnant i was 16 (laughs) and you come here and you know this generation with the internet and stuff it's completely different and i keep always talking about i say don't judge those people because i came from a culture you're not even talking about sex it's very tough um my sister is, has four children. She never had an orgasm in her life. And when I said to her why, she could not even talk to me about it. That's my culture. And then I am here talking about women freedoms. So you could tell the difference. So when I talked about two episodes, about sexuality, about different culture understanding, about um, how men think of women and how women think of men and how women think of women and you know all the things that we normally do. We, we live in every single day of our life. And um, just to bring it out, you know, it's like I talk in one subject about children who get abused in Catholic church. That's a big, big thing in Australia now. And we have a huge big cases about it. Also in America, also in Italy. And they're always like, no, don't talk about this. That's taboo. Why? Why can't we talk about it? Why can't we bring it to, to the light and tell people, careful, don't, leave your children there or just have a a minder or something like that. So platform for good, it's mean bringing the problem, talking about it, put it on the light and open discussion. And as long as you do it in a very elegant way, it's really changed people's life. It could save their life sometimes. So it's very important. Um, Tell us a little bit about this new project that you're doing with Don the Don and Cherie show. Tell us a little bit about the content of it, uh, what you're trying to portray, uh, what's the end goal of this particular show, uh, what, what, what you're trying to reinforce in this show. Um, the start of the show was interesting. I mean, we, I get a lot of people call me from radio station and they say, why don't you join the radio, why don't you talk, people like you, people love you. And I was like, I'm already too busy, I don't have time. And then don't talk to me because I thought I saw his show called Fuse, I think on Omega, or, and I watched it. And then I said to him, you know what, maybe we should do Show Me and You. We, we really talk all the time about really good things. We have a very amazing conversation all the time, very intelligent conversation. And I always say, why aren't we recording this? Why people don't even listen to this? People should listen to this. This is really good. And we never, we really never done anything about it until, uh, well, five weeks ago, I had a surgery. I had a hernia. And um, I just got thrown out in surgery. It was very painful. So when I came out of the hospital, I had a deadline. And... Um, I just slept. I didn't have any energy to make the next show. 
and don't tell me uh, do you remember when you told me about let's make a show wear a nice dress and sit on a chair and I just ask you a question and I said I'm really not well and he said you don't have to do anything just talk you always talk as, I, as you could see so I said and not asking me and I didn't really know what he was asking me and I just always respond to everything he said but then the conversation was really really good and then I watched it and I said that's really boring because I'm very visual so I said send it to me and I will pimp it <laughs> in Shiri style so I start putting all the graphics and um, I have fans for five ye for five years make this incredible art pop art of myself and send it to me from all around the world and they're beautiful and I don't have a chance to show it to anybody I have a only fan page I just put them all there and I say if you like them you're gonna look at them so I thought this is could be a good way so people don't have to look at me because I'm boring and maybe <laughs> boring so maybe they could look at art and beautiful doves which is a sample of peace in all the three religions and uh, we made it really beautiful and then suddenly we put it on TV and everyone started calling me and emailing me and texting me because I I get this craziness after the show the show is on Friday night which is tonight so it's I, gonna be like a talk show is that right Sharia Don it is a talk okay. show but the flavor <laughs> It's okay, much, with flavor, yes. <laughs> it's never been done before. It's very unusual. It's um, it's really amazingly visually. Like, let me explain to you. I went to this uh, shop, fashion shop, and this woman she recognized who I am, and she said, "You Sheri Laurent," and I said, "Yes," and she said, "I love your show. Your show. I wait for it every week." And this is my treat to myself. I I lose my life and myself in your show. The visual, the music, the conversation, the way you speak, and you memorize me. And I thought, she gave me goose pimples. And I hugged her and I said, thank you very much. And she said, thank you for stopping and talking to me. And then I immediately called Donna and said, can you believe I just got this? And then suddenly the emails start coming. So. We start getting really hard on each other in terms of the subjects because we need subject that make difference. We need subject that really important. Um, people will feel it with their heart, with their brain. It will affect their life and make them make change for good. Um, tonight episode we talked about abuse in a relationship, and um, I have good experience for years of a big range of, I know how to pick them. <laughs> they always bad. <laughs> and uh, I got to the point where I was like, that's why I make too many TV shows because I don't want any more relationship. And in every relationship I gave 100%, everything I can. And then one day I wake up in the morning and on, t on radio in Australia, every week one woman gets killed by her partner. And that completely dragged me to lots of dark memories in my life when I was mm -hmm. there. So I said to him, you know, we have a platform. We have to do something about it. We have to help because when I was in this relationship, I didn't know I was a relationship, abused relationship mm -hmm. because I was uh, paralyzed. When you're out of the relationship, you could see it, but when you're in it, you don't see it. And there's a lot of women fall in love with the wrong man. And because either their dad didn't love them or they grow up in a broken relationship. We copy our relationship and our parents. So if we could save one woman's life every time we talk about the subject and we ask her, we give her the strength to leave the relationship, protect herself and her children and we save their life, my life is worth it. You know, I could just say thank you, goodbye. The same things uh, when we talk about the children. The same things about bully, the same things about guns, and the same things about the vaccine. Um, there's so many good subjects we talk about, and that will never And I can't tell you where we're going to talk about next week because God knows what's going to happen next week. Right. But we have we have long. I mean, I made 144 episodes. Every everything talk about something important, 
and I know that Osilla is different than Mashri. And I said to him, we could make Mashri very family friendly. So we could take all the sexiness and we cover it with things that it's not sexy. So it's more family friendly. But the whole idea, I made it sexy so I could attract more men to, uh, to watch those subjects because they will make the difference. So um, where I wanted it to be, I want it to be all around the world. I want it to be like, um, I don't know, Oprah Winfrey, the new show, but without, um, can you imagine I would be giving Mercedes to everybody? <laughs> That's it. That's it. Listen, we're, you're, you're listening to Voices of Change on Usula Media. We are speaking with Don um, and Cherie, Cherie Laurent. She's a TV film producer, director, actor, and singer. Uh, she's, she was also a model. Uh, as, and as a model, her journey has taken her to Paris, London, Milan. Um, and finally, now that she's in New Zealand with these new projects that uh, she's embarking on uh, with this new TV show called Don. Uh, and Cherie. So we're talking to her about her experience, her life experience, where, where she's, uh, how she started, uh, where she's, uh, uh, she's going uh, in a new path now with this TV show talking about diverse topics, uh, topics that are, are real. Um, uh, people, people live uh, these topics, whether it's sexuality, whether it's homosexuality, whether it's abuse, uh, child abuse, sexual abuse. I mean, all of these topics are real. Um, uh, topics that uh, a lot of people consider to be at times because depending on the culture that you come from could be a taboo, I, I think. But uh, Cherie is breaking those barriers by opening that conversation and having these conversations in this new TV show called Don and Cherie. Cherie, it is a pleasure. I'm looking forward uh, to viewing this show, uh, having this show part of Usala. Uh, it's going to be uncensored. It's going to be language um, oftentimes that could be uh, a little, people can be a little taken aback by it. But I think these are raw, real conversations that we have to have and put out there to the public square. Don, I think this is going to be a success. With Cherie, what say you? We will make it success, definitely. I think one of the things when you describe me, you forget to describe me as a chatterbox. Because... Yeah. I open, I never stop. <laughs> and yeah. um, it, it, it's yeah. very easy for me to ask Cherie a question and then uh, sit back and let her do the rest. And, and yes. one thing that Cherie mentioned earlier, she's, she's not phony. She's very real. She makes herself vulnerable, which makes her very relatable to, right. to, to the audience out there. So they, they can feel what she's feeling. Um, They'll, uh, they'll say, wow, she's experienced that because this is what I'm experiencing. Right. And uh, that's what makes it so attractive, uh, this particular show. Like the, the one that we um, actually we recorded earlier uh, today was, uh, was about relationships. And uh, uh, Cherie did a, a fine film um, earlier on, this, on, the, uh, on season 11 um, uh, in a two-parter called Free Me From You, where she, where it was based on an actual relationship that she had. And it was a very abusive relationship and, and how she came out on top. But at the end of it, at the end of the episodes, we make it very positive. Um, it sounds like a dark subject. It sounds like a controversial subject. It, it sounds uh, that, wow, this is a, uh, um, a subject that's, um, that's, a, that's a little bit uh, tense. But mm. at the end of it, at the end of it, it, uh, it it's positive. Um, Cherie takes that pain that she experienced and turns it into success and, yeah. and how she does that. Now, if, if that message resonates to the right individual to turn that around, um, what a difference they, that they can make in their own lives. Yeah, yeah. She, uh, and, and so true. Uh, she's taken topics that people can relate to. You know, the topic of abuse, as an example, people can relate to that. There's a lot of women in this country, not only here in the United States, across the globe uh, that have suffered at some point, uh, you know, this issue of abuse. And so that's, that's another topic that can be very touchy, but it's relatable because women can identify with that. So I think, you know, this, these topics that are going to be evolved on, on, on this show, I think, are conversations that we need to have, 
are raw conversations that we need to take uh, 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 forward and, 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 and make, make them part of the conversation here at USALA, because that's what USALA is all about, is hearing your, your, your voice and then relating those topics uh, to individuals and to people that can relate to those to those topics. And I so so we welcome we welcome this conversation, Sheree. And I'm so happy that Don has been able to introduce you to us and to Usala. And I look forward to uh, working with both of you and expanding these conversation and this show, and hopefully to a success um, uh, here at Usala and abroad. Yeah, I wanted to mention one quick thing that wasn't brought out earlier that uh, from Cherie's past season that she has been nominated for uh, two awards in uh, in Australia. They call it the Atena Awards and she's mm -hmm. been nominated for for uh, best performer and also best director. And mm -hmm. uh, so that though those awards will be happening in Australia in the month of September. They were going to be in May, and then it got, everything got delayed due to uh, due to COVID down there. I mean, it's all around the world. There's no secret about that. And um, and so that I just wanted to mention that as well. So the the talent is there, and what wow. Sherry puts together is uh, is is uh, she's she's very skilled of of what she does. Cherie, we would like to showcase those awards that you're going to be uh, you're going to be the recipient of. We would like to showcase those those awards once uh, uh, you you uh, receive those awards. We would like to uh, showcase that here at Usala to show your talent and to show the talent that we do have here at Usala. We have a very diverse audience, and we have talented people that have shows here, like yourself and Don. So once again, Cherie, anything else? Uh, you would like to say to conclude this interview. Cherie? 2007, I got nominated the best presenter for the year and the best camera work and the best art show. So don't always forget those. I mean, I didn't win, but I was nominated. Yeah. So <laughs> add it to, to the basket. And um, what I'm saying is um, if we can, me or John or any one of us, if we could change one person's life to the positive and help them to see the light and help them to make the right changes in their life and reduce the amount of pain or struggle or suffer that each one of us has experienced in life. And um, that will make, you know, the network and the show is worth it. That make everything is worth it because we here um, to help and we here yes. to um to be honest, to be truthful, to be raw, and to be friend and to open our heart to you. And hopefully in return, you will open our heart to us and accept us in return. That's all of you asking for. So thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you so much, Don. Do you have anything else to, to say before we conclude? Well, I thank you, Leslie, for um, having us on the show. Thank you for having me part of USALA for these past four years and to be the voice of the... Uh, of the voiceover for all the uh, introductions to all the shows here at um, at at Usala, and uh, so uh, thank you for a good uh, working relationship, and and then I and also this opportunity as well. So thank you. Well, thank you, and hopefully we'll have a second segment to this interview, Cherie, after we start airing uh, the show, Cherie, uh, Don and Cherie. I would like to bring you back um, and kind of gauge at that point how the show is, is being viewed. And I think uh, a second segment to this interview is definitely welcome and we will have that. And it's a pleasure, pleasure meeting you, Cherie. Um, it's you. an honor for us to have you uh, here at uh, Usala Media. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Don.